whatever that is is so high, dude. Right, right here. Look, there's another way one. Way too fucking fast, bro. What is that one? <gasps> oh! Whoa! Oh! Whoa! Oh! Oh! What was oh! that? Look at this shit. What the fuck? This is why they want us to stay in the house. This is why the fuck they want us to stay in the fucking house, nigga. It ain't the coronavirus, nigga. It ain't the radiation, nigga. It's this. What the fuck is this? What is this? What is that? What is this? Hold on. What is this? What is, what is this? What is that? What is this? What is this in the sky right now? What's going on? They're not, they not airplanes. They doing formations and shit. Like, what's going on? For real, for real. Somebody please explain to me, man. What's going on, man? Like, this shit crazy right now. What the fuck? Yo, check, check this out, man. What's that, man? I don't know. I'm recording it. That's not a plane, is it? No way. What's that flash thing? It's way too big. It should look like it's coming towards us, bro. Uh, whoa, whoa. Yo, yo, yo. Where's it? Where's it? Oh shit, see that? Shalom Akim. We the brothers from the Essek Barrier Camp on our way to the battlefield to teach the words of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shema Shai. Blessed with another week to teach this beautiful word. First and foremost, we want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai Ba'ashim Rukakwadash. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone taught us the truth. Salutations to all you I came through the four corners of the earth that's preaching this word in sincerity and the truth. And Shalom to all you believers that believe on this word in sincerity and the truth. Shalom to you. Shalom. You know, I'm the brother Manasazak and I got with me. I'm the brother Yari Allah. I'm the brother Shamar. You know, we just coming at you with an in-transit lesson through the spirit. You know, Lord's will will be edifying. You know, like we always start off our in-transit lessons with the saying that we have, we one day closer to our enemy Esau's downfall. And we one day closer to our Lord, Yahweh Shai's return. And like the scriptures say, our Lord is coming with great power and great glory to this earth. And we're just going to get some scriptures on, on the way our Lord is returning because it's going to be a way that's never been seen before on the earth. His second coming is going to be uh, seen throughout the earth. Like the scriptures say, every eye shall see him. He's coming in what the world calls UFOs, which they're IFOs to us. We can identify these flying objects that are well documented throughout the earth. Oh, you got uh, camera footage, uh, cell phone footage of these vehicles, the light, how they call it, the lights in the sky. Those vehicles are known as the chariots of Israel, the chariots of Israel. And that's how the angels traveled. They're vehicles that can go from the fourth dimension to the third dimension. They're vehicles that are from the heavens. And these vehicles are, are going to be used to invade Esau's world and his nation's world. So we're just going to get scriptures. You know, to bring out the, the you know the truth. I'm gonna start off with this one. Um this is Revelations. Revelations chapter one, verse seven. It says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. Matter of fact, I'll start at one and jump to seven. Revelations chapter one, verse one. The revelation of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, which the most high gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John mm -hmm. so these are the um, these are the visions that um, that John the Revelator received when he was um, pretty much sent to the Isle of well, I believe Pat, uh, Patmos. Patmos yeah and um, I believe he was the last um, disciple to be alive okay. around that time and it was and we, we see why to receive these uh these great revelations for the um a for the for the uh, for the churches really for the body you know now i'm gonna jump to verse seven it says behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall, shall see him yeah and that's talking about um the he is yahweh shy just like it says in what acts the first chapter when the lord um pretty much was uh beamed up into the chariots after speaking with the uh, the disciples, the um, those two men that were um, in, in white apparel were two angels, and they were pretty much saying that um, the same the same way that they seen Yahweh Shai uh, uh, leave uh -huh. with uh, get beamed up into the chariots is the same way that he's going to return. You know, and this time he's coming back on the on the father ship. You know, he's not coming back the same way he left. Pretty much, you know. And as it says in the book of Psalms, 
um, who how did it say who who make of the, uh, the cloud? Oh, I got it too. Oh, that's the spirit. Okay. Link it up. Then I'll get that in Acts too. Kind, kind. It says, "Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, mm -hmm. and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, to what? Yeah, that's right. So everybody is going to uh, see the return. Everybody that's still on the scene, you know, is going to see the return of the one uh, whom the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, which his name is Yahweh Shai, the Lord's only begotten Son." You know, and even those uh, two Roman uh, uh, centurions that pierced the Lord uh, roughly, what, 2,000 years ago, they're back, it goes to show that they're back here today. And they're the same lot, more than likely, uh, shit, awaiting their judgment, just like the rest of these people. You know? Now, this is a precept to, uh, to back up what the clouds are. Now, this is Psalms chapter 104, verse 3. Well, I started at Psalms 104 and 2. Who covereth thyself? Well, let me start at one. Psalms 104 and 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord, my power. Thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who covereth thyself with light as, a, as with a garment. Who stretcheth out the heavens like a curtain. Who layeth the beams of the chambers in the waters. Who maketh the clouds his chariots. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Yep. Showing you that, um, you know, a lot of, most of the time, if not all, um, when the scripture speaks about uh, clouds, well, when we were getting led out of uh, Egypt, yeah. that was a chariot leading uh, leading us out of Egypt, all right? What is that? The um, the, um, the cloud, cloud by day, pillar of fire by night, yeah. you know, showing you, and, that, and that's exactly why the scriptures say, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. You get a better understanding what the scriptures are saying, if the spirit is dealing with you as, as well. Yeah, because you have to look at it, and you have to understand that it was written in a different time. Yep. You know, so it's going, it's comparing it, the chariots to a cloud. You know, it's not saying that it was li a literal cloud, because you know how that's what the churches try to teach when they talk about, uh, you know, Jesus and stuff. They say they show him coming down on the literal clouds and everything. And that's not what it's talking about, you know. The, the clouds is just re a reference referring to the chariots. Yep. Yep. Now this is uh, what the brother quoted. I'm going to just read it. This is Acts chapter 1, verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said, He, ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, would thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Yep. So they, cause, because they understood who the kingdom was uh, was meant for and that, you know, it was all pro uh, prophecy. And, and this was all the process that we had to go through to, you know, to receive the kingdom. Yet it wasn't um, it wasn't that time back then. More had to be, uh, more had to be fulfilled and come to pass. Mm -hmm. It says, and he said unto them, "It is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father had put in His own power." Yeah, because no man know, not even Yahweh Shai Himself. The Lord couldn't tell them uh, what time because He didn't know. Yet He gave them the best uh, time frame that uh, He could give, which is, um, which is via the prophecies. Yeah. You know, these things would be occurring. Leading up to that day. Yeah, to that day. Yeah. That's why the scriptures say you gotta uh, measure the, the time diligently within itself. Meaning, you search the scriptures and you measure the prophecies by what's happening. You know? So it says, "But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you." And that's the time we are now, where the Lord is going to grant His elect men with that power. You know, yeah. as as promised. The scriptures say we go. We sh he shall do greater works. It says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spake these things while they beheld, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. Which was a, uh, which was a chariot. You know, the Lord 
you know, you can pretty much how the, the worldly terms he was beamed up yep. into uh, into the chariot, well, into a chariot. Yep, like they got that Star Trek saying, um, "Beam me up, Scotty." You know. So it says, and while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which were two, uh, which were two angels. All right. Which also said, "Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven?" This same Yahushai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him, as ye have seen him go into heaven. So the same way they, the disciples seen the Lord get taken up into the cloud, that's the same way he's gonna return. You know? That's right. Now let's get another precept. Um, I have a quick one. Oh, you got it out. This is um, Isaiah 66 and 15. It says, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to so render the, his, his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. So the second coming of the Lord, Yahweh Shah, our Lord, is going to be a, a, a terrible day. That's why the scriptures say, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is, end is it for you? Right. He's coming back angry. Because you got to remember, the scriptures say, One day to the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. In the heavens, it's only been about two days since he was on the cross, since he had to catch that hill, you know? That's why when we read Revelation 1 and 7, it says, every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him, meaning he's gunning for them Roman centurions that pierced him. And that proves reincarnation because the same souls that had a part in his um, crucifixion are back reincarnated on the earth. Probably some high level general in the military, you know, some high level fighter pilot. So he's coming back with the chariots to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. So right, right now he's rebuking you via the word, you know, for speaking about two thirds of our people that don't want to get right. But eventually the rebuke is going to come through that fire, you know, whether it be the chariots or the ultimate fire, the nuclear missiles. You got it up. It says, for by fire and his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. So many people are going to die by the hands of our Lord Yahweh Shai when he returns. And why is he coming back? To bring this mass death to the earth. Because the earth is polluted. First and foremost, Esau, the so-called white man, is ruling the earth. And under his rulership, he's jacked the whole earth up. The people of the Lord are, are, are jacked up, you know. Everything that creation itself is just fucked up. So that Heavenly Father has to send His only begotten Son to clean up the creation. So it's going to have to, uh, a lot of people are going to have to be um, given over to the slaughter, you know? Now this is uh, Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and the crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. That's right. And that, that white horse was uh, was talking about a chariot, you know. Um, which, and this is another point, um, you know, with these different churches and, you know, these different groups. They'll say, like, oh, it's an actual horse. Like, the Lord is going to come back on Pegasus or some dumb stuff, which this is all uh, symbolic. The horse representing uh, power. And uh, the white representing uh, purity, you know, and which added really the Lord is about to come back and, and pure power, uh, pure power yep. in a rare form. It's so. scripture say, um, you know, he will not meet thee as a man. Yeah. So that's how that's like you know showing you right there, you know that he, how you gonna come back? Yeah. He ain't coming back as a, a regular person. He coming back with that spiritual power and that spiritual body. Yep. yep. With the chariots. That's right. Yeah. You, Two thousand years ago, he was a man. You know, he was mortal. He was in the flesh. The scriptures say, um, the, the only begotten Son made a little lower than the angel, a little lower than the angel. So he was he came down in sinful flesh to uh, to fulfill his will, fulfill the Father's will on the earth, be the ultimate sacrifice. And he came upon an ass too. Yep. You know, but that was, that was him taking the low. Yep. Now, yep. now that he received, now that he took the low and did what he had to do, finished his course. Now he's returning back in that glory. You know, that superhuman body. Like the scriptures say, I will not meet thee as a man. He's coming back as an angelic force. You know? That's right. And he's coming back to conquer and, and to conquer, meaning to take you nations out of your rulership. Mm -hmm. Because that was the promise that the Father gave him 
said the father Yahweh said ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thy inheritance you no know? so that's the inheritance that Yahweh Shai has received for, for, um, for finishing his course all nations are going to be put under his feet as the scriptures say now I'm going to get a uh, scripture this um, precept Revelation chapter 19 verse 11 and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And that's talking about Yahweh Shai, you know, in righteousness that he doth judge, and he's coming back to bring judgment, you know. Like the brother just said, he already he already came here as a man, you know, fulfilled his whole role and his whole duty. So now when he returns back to deliver the elect and the one third, he's coming back to execute judgment as well, yeah. you know. Righteous judgment at that, yep. Yep. because yes, because that's not that's not what's going on on earth. Nothing but wickedness is going on. Like it says, I believe in Habakkuk the first chapter. You know, because um, pretty much the wicked are are in, in the position of power. Wrong judgment do uh, proceed mm -hmm. So what what, uh, what the Lord is coming back to do is pretty much balance out the justice scale, bring righteous judgment upon the earth. Yep. You know, which a lot, which majority of these people are going to fall victim uh, uh, towards, like the brother Red and Isaiah, the 66th chapter. All these goddamn uh, idol worshippers, adulterers, witches, you know, all these wicked people, man, they should, they've committed acts, uh, they've committed uh, sins that are worthy of death. But here it is, Esau allows these people to continue on in, in their madness and, and um, spread that uh to others, you know. So the Lord, hey, the Lord is coming back to nip all this in the bud, man. Yep. Put the earth back in this order. Mm -hmm. It says, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Yeah, that's right. And and, and um, those crowns are representative of the of, of the Lord taking dominion and rulership from all these. Uh, uh, heathen nations that are that are in a position of power, you know, because really it all belongs into uh, until Yahweh shot. So really, he's coming back to get what's rightfully his, and it's in that name that they say that is written. Uh, it's, it's talking about the title that he's received, the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh shot. Okay, no no other man can uh, can can claim that um, that role or that title or that position okay. you know that was given to him from the heavenly father himself okay. mm -hmm. and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name was called the word of the most high and it's dipped in blood because of the, the many that's being put to death you know yeah. like I said um, you know like I said in Isaiah 60, 66 and 15 you know the slain of the Lord shall be many so that's why his, his, his uh, you know, his clothes gonna look like it was dipped in blood because that's how many people were being slaughtered. Mm -hmm. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. We're just talking about the um, the other angels that are going to be in the other uh, chariots, you know, because the Lord is going to empty out the the host of heaven. The time that we're coming into. Um, the scriptures actually speaks about that, you know, so what is that second Ezra, the 13th chapter, okay, okay. you know, because these nations are, are, well, I forgot that devil that said that too. Was it Ronald Reagan or something? Yeah, Ronald Reagan. If there was an outside uh, force, would we not, would we not uh, put our differences aside and stop uh, battling each other to come together to, to come up against that, that force, yeah. which they knew what they were speaking about. It's all scriptural. And now more than ever, it's being uh, exposed and revealed. They can no longer uh, deny the uh, the existence of the chariots. Yeah, they they know that's their that's their final battle they have to face. Mm -hmm. That's why the, um, when Trump was in office, he created something called the Sixth Branch of the Military, yeah. which they call it the Space Force, yeah. because they know eventually they're going to have to uh, face our Lord. Yeah. But what they in their minds, they're thinking they can defeat the Lord. Mm -hmm. But that's the Lord hardening their hearts, just as He hardened Pharaoh's hearts during the time of um, our captivity in ancient Egypt. Okay. This, this next battle is going to be, the, you know, the next big story that's being told. Just how, like, to this very day, you know, like brothers always be mentioning here and there, how to this very day, the big story that's still told is that what happened in Egypt. You know, that's still a, a story that's told and, and movies being made about it to this very day. 
and this is going to be the next, you know, the next big story that's going to be told in the kingdom. You know, the, the, this battle getting ready to happen. How the whole story of Esau, you know, trying to go to war with the Heavenly Father and losing horribly. Yeah, yeah. Miserably. Yeah. It says, and out of his mouth go up a sharp sword that, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Yeah, that's right. And that, that sword is talking about um, the... Um, Pretty much that concentrated fire that's going to be coming from the uh, the chariots, you know, the so-called laser beams, because they mentioned that in the apocrypha, I believe as well, mm -hmm. how the Lord, uh, you know, neither lifted hand. I'm not quoting verbatim, but it's because of the uh, the fire that's going to be uh, sent off from the chariots. Yeah, he, he, li he neither lifted up hand nor sword, yep, yep. nor any instrument of war, okay. but only only. Uh, Pretty much out of the mouth, we shot a blast of fire. I mean, he he doesn't have to do anything. You know? Right. I, I got it right here. Yeah, you got it. Uh, it's, I'm gonna start at uh, yeah, chapter uh, it's so <laughs> heavy. You might as well start at. Uh, I started from. Uh, so you might as well start at verse 2 yeah. <laughs> and work your way uh, down. 2 Ezra 13 to 2. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the ways thereof. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. Yeah, so the sea is talking about the outer space. So Yahweh Shah is going to come from the outer space into the uh, ozone layer. And with him, the thousands of heaven is talking about the angels, you know, the innumerable amount of angels. Because okay. the Lord, Yahweh, is going to empty out the heavens. So Michael, the archangel, is going to be the, uh, leading the charge with Yahweh Shai, with all the other holy angels to invade the earth. Continue. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. All the things tremble, so people are going to be afraid, just as we read in Revelation 1 and 7. Every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, meaning they're gonna be terrified. Nothing like this has ever happened in the history of the earth, right. where the Lord emptied out the heavens to invade the earth, the, pretty much to invade His creation. You know, to come back and, and take the rulership of the earth. It's gonna put the whole earth in shock. Mm -hmm. But it's not like they've been haven't been warned because the prophets have been telling you about this. Yep. You got it out. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things that were that were seen under him, uh, all the things trembled that were seen under him. And who, and whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burnt that heard his voice, like as the earth fell if when it filleth the fire. Mm -hmm. Talking about them lasers, that, that concentrated fire that is going to shoot right. and burn you people up. And the perfect example is that movie War of the Worlds. When you've seen the yep. chariots come out and you've seen them lasers and concentrated fire yep. evaporating people, turning them to powder. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. literally gonna happen. Yeah, people running, screaming, and yep. getting zapped. People gonna be, they, people, what's going on? It's gonna be a terrible, that's why it says, woe unto you that desire to dead the Lord. For what end is it, if, what end is it for you to dead the Lord? It's darkness and not light. It's gonna be a fearful day when Yahweh Shah returns. Continue. And after this, I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of heaven of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. Yeah, so all the heathen nations, at the time when Yahweh Shah returns, it's going to be in the midst of World War III. You're going to have nations coming against each other, and in the midst of the, uh, all hell breaking loose, Yahweh Shah is just going to show up. You know, so that's why the scriptures say he's going to return as a thief in the night to the uh, to the unwatched, the people that are not on their watch. And the nations are going to stop fighting each other and turn all their uh, all their um, military forces to fight the Lord. You got it up. But I beheld and lo, he he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. And that great mountain is that that father, the huge fathership that the Lord is going to return in, which is going to black out the sky. Okay. Pretty much an example of that is the um, Independence, Independence Day. Day. A more better example is Independence Day Part 2, because it was an even bigger chariot in that movie, where he just showed you, like, no matter where you look, you look to the left, the right, 
you couldn't see nothing but that cherry. That's how it's going to be when Yahweh Shah returns, you know? And they, they got NASA footage. There's actual footage of a chariot. They say it's about 10, 15 times bigger than the Earth. God. It was about two years ago, three years ago, right before the, um, the, pandemic. the pandemic happened. Mm -hmm. And right when that chariot uh, was caught on NASA uh, film, they cut, the, they cut the feed. And it seemed like all the shit just started escalating, moving quick. What's that scripture? Revelation 12 and 12, he, he come up with great wrath because he know he had but a short time. Yeah. So it seemed like Esau had to start moving because they see shit, you know? <laughs> the Lord showing them things. Yep. You got it out. It says, but I would have seen the region or place where where um where out the hill was graven and I could not. Yeah, so he's looking to see where the hill starts, where it, where it ends, he can't see it. That's how big of a chariot this is. You got it. And after this I beheld and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid were sore afraid and yet durst fright. So they're gonna be afraid. They're going to be on them fighter jets. Oh, I don't want to do this. But the Lord is going to harden their hearts and make them fight. Just as he hardened Pharaoh's heart to not let us go during the time of ancient Egypt. And he smote Egypt with plagues. So that's the same thing the Lord is going to do in the modern day time with these nations. He's going to harden their hearts to fight his only begotten son. You see? And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up, lift up his hand nor held sword nor any instrument of war. Yeah, so he don't have to do nothing, you know? He just gonna be watching y'all come at him. Yep. And continue. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire. So that concentrated fire is gonna come out the chariots. Zoop! Right to, right to the enemy. To Esau and his fighter jets, Moab and their fighter jets, Ishmael and their fighter jets. Continue. And out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. Continue. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flame and breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight and burnt them up, every one, so that upon a sudden of an, innumer of an, of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived but only dust and smell of smoke. Upon of a, su a sudden, Instantly, zoop, a part of a sudden, nothing was to be perceived but only dust and smell of smoke. I mean, he vaporized them. Like that movie, A War of the Worlds, when them lasers came out, just zapping shit, you turn into powder, pretty much dehydrates you. So the, all the Esau's fighter jets, all that technology, just poof. Nothing was to be perceived but dust and smoke. Now, that's power for your ass. Mm -hmm. And, and, and what's, what, how did Ezra feel when he seen this? Because Ezra pretty much what the Lord did. He put Ezra in a hologram. Yeah. So it's like Ezra literally there seeing it. Like, brothers, we have intense dreams. Brothers have dreams about spiritual power, the Lord returning the chariots. You know, and it feel real. You can feel the air. You can feel like the, um, the energy that's in the air. You can feel like you're actually there. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what the Lord did with Ezra. He put him in like a trance to where he was actually there seeing it. It says why he felt um, when he seen it yep. at the very end of it. Is that when I saw this, I was afraid. Yeah, he was afraid. So that's that's we gonna need protection from on high from the, on the, in the great day of the Lord. You know, mm. like it's another scripture where Ezra seen the um, the uh, famine. He seen death, destruction, the pestilence, Jacob's trouble. He said, "Woe is me! Woe is me! Who would deliver me in those days?" So this is a terrible day that the Lord is bringing on the earth. That's why um, I believe Habakkuk said it, but. That's why, because he's seen the devastation too, the destruction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, you know, Lord, in the time of thy, thy wrath, remember mercy. Mm -hmm. You know, I got, it's, it's going to be I bad. Got, I got two scriptures we can end it on this. Um, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. And the dragon is talking about Esau, mm -hmm. you know, and his angels is, is talking about his, you know, his fighter jets and stuff. That's how. That's why, like the brothers mentioned earlier, the six branch, the space force. That's why they got that. They gonna try to fight the, the Lord, but they they low level technology ain't gonna even do nothing. Yeah. They just gonna be like the scriptures we just read. They just gonna literally be getting zapped and turning into dust, and still trying to fight. Yep. But that's the, going back to Exodus uh, 15 and 3. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. The heavenly Father loves a good fight. Yep. So he's gonna harden East, even though it's a losing battle. It's really point. It really, this one angel could destroy the whole planet Earth. So this is just a flex of power. 
This the Lord, Yahweh Bashmel Shai, flexing his power on the earth, letting the earth know I'm the boss of the earth. Mm -hmm. Now it says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. So this is not talking about how the churches teach you. Oh, there was a rebellion in the heavens, right. and the angels, uh, and one third of the angels yeah. got kicked out, and they tried to uh, have a coup, military coup against the heavenly Father, and he caught on to it. And he kicked. Nah, that's fuck fairy tale bullshit. Right. All the angels are in order, as the scriptures say. This is talking about a future prophecy that's going to take place mm -hmm. when the heavenly Father and the Son. With Michael the Archangel leading the charge in the chariots fight against Esau and other nations. It says, And the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. So what Yahweh is gonna do is he's gonna take them out of their rulership. And and that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. I mean, he's going to be taken out of his rulership. Esau, the so-called white man, that serpent, that old serpent, mm -hmm. going back to the garden, he's going to be taken out of his power and, and put beneath us as he should be. Now, just the last scripture back in uh, 2nd Ezra. We can end it on this. 2nd uh, Ezra chapter 13, verse 29. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon, uh, that are upon the earth. And we um, coming into those days, you know. When, as things continue to get worse, you know, we could, we gonna need to be delivered out of it. You know, everything that's been to get ready to come to pass, it, it's no way that you can deliver yourself, you know? So we have to put our whole faith in, and trust in the Heavenly Father, you know, delivering us. And that's showing the, um, the balance of the Lord, because the chariots are gonna do one or two things, you know, coming back to deliver and to destroy. Mm -hmm. It says, and he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. Yeah, and that's the majority of the people. They're gonna be astonished at it because, uh, like brothers mentioned earlier, now it's it's well known that the chariots, um, you know, so-called UFOs exist. You know, they're not denying it no more. So people are they, they just are at a point now where they don't know what's so-called what's allegedly inside. You know, they they believe in Esau narrative that it's aliens or some crazy stuff. But then you're gonna see who it really is, and you're gonna be astonished. Yeah, you're gonna be astonished. You're gonna be bugging out. Yep. We, we telling you what it is. It's so-called black men, how they how the world describes them, so-called black men, angelic beings mm -hmm. with dark skin, melanated skin, with, with big afros and big beards, you know, dressed in all white, the angels, and Yahweh Shai himself coming back in that superhuman body. You know, they know the top international banking families, they know what's in those ships, and they know it's nothing good for them. So they're going to try to spin a narrative all, the best way they can or oh, it's aliens they're evil yeah they're evil for you right. but they're good for us you know mm -hmm. that's why the slaves knew when we left um, during the time of slavery they had a slave song that they was seeing uh, they were seeing swing low sweet chariot coming forth to carry us home mm -hmm. I looked over the river Jordan and what did I see a band of angels coming forth to carry me home mm -hmm. they knew those chariots for, uh, for, were for our benefit you know mm -hmm. right just that in these times, Esau has done uh, use his witchcraft to detach our people from that that thought, to know that those vehicles are for us. You know, right. like you had that one nigga say, aliens, yeah. aliens, shoot the he calling on Esau to shoot him. You know. That's right. Now I'm gonna finish it up. It says, and he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth, and one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another. One people against another. Yeah, because and the thing um, about the Lord coming to these people astonishment because the last thing they're going to ex ex uh, expect is a is a, a chariot invasion. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're going to be so fixated on the hell that they're catching, the um, fighting each other, and then at the at the brink of all hell breaking loose and, and taking place, man. The chariots, they yeah, the Lord gonna crack the skies. Yep. You know. It says. One place against another, one people against another, and one realm against another. Mm -hmm. The spiritual realm versus the physical realm. Yep. So Yahweh Shai is going to leave the uh, spiritual realm. He's going to leave from off the throne on the right hand of the Father Yahweh. And he's going to uh, come. His spirit is going to be put inside that uh, superhuman extraterrestrial body. The tallest man in Israel, you're younger than all the rest, as Ezra saw that um, vision too. Okay. 
He's going to come down with the holy angels to do what? To wreck shop and to deliver his elect, you know? And the scriptures say, we shall meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So this is Yahweh Shai. That's the balance. He's coming back to destroy the wicked and to bring salvation to the righteous, you know? So this is what we have the hope for, Lord's will. We can be part of that hopeful number, the elect, and the Lord delivers us from this hell, you know, this nightmare, and destroys our enemies, you know? So, Lord's will, this lesson was edifying. We want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Kakwadash. Shalom. Shalom.